These are coin spinners from Mark Rober's company Crunch Labs. And today, my brother and I are going to show you how to get a strike on the coin bowling game one out of three tries. Try two. And try three. But to find out how we got so good at this bowling game, let's go back three weeks. Because that's when we got our second box from Crunch Labs. And to our surprise and delight, we found it was the coin spinner. Now, the coin spinner build box comes with a few fun games you can play. And one of those is this super cool coin bowling game, where you can prop up coins using these tiny stands and then try to knock them down by launching a coin at them. And when we first got our coin spinners, this game was definitely high on our list of things we wanted to play. But when we got everything set up and started firing, we realized most of the time the coins were hard to aim and just went flying in a different direction than we intended them to. And when the coin did hit the pins, it only knocked down one or two, which left us to come up with a better strategy. Now the first thing to consider was the aim. After I crank the ratchet and load the coin, it always shoots to the left. And the reason for this is because of the way the ratchet arm hits the coin. As you see here, the arm comes around and hits the coin on the side. Now this is necessary for when it gets hit that way, the coin starts to spin, and that is the very point of the toy. But this way, it always shoots the coin off to the side. So to fix this, we put the coin as far to the right as possible. So when the ratchet arm hits it, the coin is propelled in the straightest track possible, which is approximately 5 degrees left. That results in much better accuracy. This technique definitely does not work every time, but it is a great strategy when it does. Okay, now that we know how to launch a coin, let's find out where we're launching it to. But you might be thinking, hey Eli, we got the internet. You could just Google the best bowling techniques and apply that to your game. Heck, even Mark Rober has a video where he talks about the best bowling techniques. And I'm like, I get that. I've seen those videos. In fact, the very first technique we tried was the one Mark Rober suggested, where you hit the bowling pins at an angle, therefore starting a chain reaction of one pin and hitting the other until there are none left. But when we tried this technique, we weren't getting strikes at all. And after closer inspection, we realized why. The first problem lies in the difference between a bowling ball and a bowling coin. A bowling ball is heavy. And if you swing it with enough force, it will plow through the bowling pins. But when you're bowling with a coin, it hits the first pin with enough force to push it back. And if you hit it at an angle, the first coin shoots back and hits the other coin in the row it is angled toward. But in return for hitting the pin, the bowling coin also shoots back because it is the same weight as the coin it is hitting and the fact it is also spinning. So instead of continuing to plow through the other pins, it just goes backward, leaving the last coin still standing. The other problem with using Mark's strategy is the design of the stands for the pins. Even though by itself, the coin sitting in the stand is not very sturdy, when it is pushed by another falling coin on the right or left side, the shape of the coin and stand allows it to be turned to the side, instead of getting knocked over. So it is virtually impossible to knock it down unless you hit it in the direct center or with enough force to push it off balance. And after considering all these problems for a bit, we found the perfect strategy. If you hit the first coin straight on with all the force of your bowling coin, then it will fly back and in the process, hit the other coins behind it and knock them over as well. Now we tried to apply this strategy to a game with six pins and it did not perform as well. The reason for this is again because of the stance. If you look closely at this frame here, you will see that the middle coin in the last row has no other coin directly in front of it. And just like we talked about earlier, when the coins are knocked down, the first coin hits the two behind it, and they fall back, taking out the rest of their rows. But this coin never gets hit from the front at any time. It just gets turned to the left, thanks to the stand design. So after a butt ton of testing and a lot of different strategies, we concluded that beside this nearly perfect shot, it is impossible to get a strike with six coins. After testing with the game so much, I realized it reminded me of a video Mark Rober did, where he talks about carnival games and how some are just plain scams, but are designed to make you overestimate your chances of winning. With this game, it appears fairly easy and straightforward, but when you start playing, 
Not only is the spinner unpredictable and hard to aim, but the stands are designed to keep the coin standing unless it is hit directly from the front, which equals in a very low probability of winning. But once we figured out that the secret is to hit the first coin head on, we were able to get a strike one out of three tries. Now we'd like to show you some super cool, Mark Wilbur themed, spinning coin pictures my brother came up with using Persistence of Vision. Now if you're wondering what Persistence of Vision is, in short, it is our brain's ability to take two different images and blend them together so we see them as one. <laughs> that should be a like a like a a blooper. Yeah. It will. <laughs>